Welcome back. So this is the final video in our list module. So well done for making it this far. Um, and in this final video, we'll be looking at list amendment. Um, so basically, this is just when we want to change or update specific values within our list. So the very basic um, way to do this would just be using our colon operator. So for example, if I know I want to update the second element of the list, so we'll just show L before and after. I can see um, my second element, which is 10, has been updated to be 40 here. Um, and just to note, if I try to pass it a different type, so this is a type short here. Um, if I try and change that, it's going to give me an error. I can't do that. It must be a long um, value because my input list is a long. OK. Um, so we can also use criteria and the where combo that we've seen in the last video um, in order to come up with this list of indexes that we want to change. So for example, I have a list X and then I'm going to check anywhere where X is greater than 30 and I'm going to replace that with the value 30. So if we just pull this out and do this step by step, first of all, I'm asking, right, where are my indices where X is greater than 30? That's um, the first one here, 31, is over 30. And then the fifth one, which is 2, 3, 4, 5 here, or is 40, um, is greater than 40. Um, sorry, I've missed 3 as well there, 47, and so on. And then if I want to get the values of those, I can put X out in front. Let me just hit one there. Um, so we're getting those specific values back. And then to reassign them, I can simply just put colon 30 out in front. So I'm capping our list um, at 30 basically here. Um, so have a go at this following exercise. Um, very similar to this one, um, just one thing to note, and it kind of goes back to um, the types and needing your indexes to be of type, um, a full type or a whole, a whole value. Um, so reals are not a whole value, so just watch out for that. And um, there's a few ways you can account for that. One way that might be helpful is to look at this div. Um, so this allows us to do integer division. So we we'll return the greatest whole number that does not exceed um, normal division. Um, so that can be handy when you're trying to generate a list of indices using division. Um, you can use div instead of the percent sign we had seen before. Okay. So have a go with that exercise and then once you're happy we'll move on to looking at amendment using at so this is our second way of changing elements of a list um so first of all just to know we can also just use this to do simple indexing into the list so for example um i do at and then i pass um, i have to use functional notation with at um, i'm calling this at but it's also known as amend or reply um but yeah, I call it the at operator myself. Um, and you can see here, I'm passing it functional notation where the first parameter is L, my list, and the second one is the indices I want to return. So that's just returning here, um, these two values. So I could pass that, you know, the 10th one as well. Um, oh, that's out of bounds. So let's go a little bit smaller. And I'm getting um, five returned here. Okay, so that's... Um, just indexing. Now you notice here I've only got two parameters um, and what changes the behavior of um, this at function is basically the amount of parameters you have. So we can go back to our overloaded glyphs page, we can check out the at operator um, and you can see here different implementations. So if I look at these and I see how many parameters there is, so you can see here these first two only have two parameters and this one here is L looks like a list. So you can check, um, you can see here that I was, I was passing it L and I, if you go read about that and that, that's how you know which one you're doing. And then once we do um, more parameters, so you see here I've got three parameters and then four parameters, I'm doing amend, amendments. Um, and then if the third parameter here is a colon, I'm doing a replace, for example. Um, so it's just a tip on how to figure out which one is happening. Um, so when I have three parameters, so the first parameter being the list, the second one here, when I see colon colon, that basically means um, it's a generic null um, and it's also an identity function, which we'll be looking at in a different module, um, the module on functions. Um, but for now, we're just using it as generic null, which means 
We're just saying we're not passing any indexes in particular. This is where your list of indexes would go. Um, and we just want you to apply whatever function comes next to the entire list. So I'm applying neg, which is negating all my values, um, and I'm applying it to the entire list here. So if we run this, we see all of these um, values have now been negated. Um, then the second version here, I'm applying another parameter, which is a fourth parameter here. So I've got L, generic null again, saying do this to the whole list. Then I'm pass passing the plus operator and then the value two. So when I only have um, three parameters here and I'm just passing a function, that means the function just takes one parameter, which is your list. And then when you have got four parameters, it means this function takes two parameters, um, which the first one being the list and the second one being this here, um, fourth parameter you're passing in here. So I'm saying add two to every element of L. So you can see every element is incremented by two. And you'll note that L remains unchanged. So both of these haven't done anything to, to change L in memory. It just goes back to the way it is. If you did want to update L, you could simply pass L colon in front to persist that change in memory. Okay, um, so let's take a look at what would happen if we remove this generic null. So for example, I don't pass anything here. You can see what's spat out is the function itself. So what's happening here, it's creating a projection. So we've seen this at the end of our Adams module and it basically says, I'm, I'm still waiting on an input parameter, I'm missing one. So we would need to pass it a parameter there. So say if I passed it, uh, zero, for example, it's going to go and update um, just the zero with element, which is 11. So you can see I've just increased my first element by two. And you can pass in multiple ones. So you can see if I do zero, one, oops, um, here I've increased the first two. So that's just to be aware of. And you can also pass the, the explicit indices, obviously, in here. Um, um, and that just it changes our third index here. Okay. Um, so we're also showing instead of actually explicitly listening the indexes, we could use our old friend where in here again to create those indexes. So we're saying anywhere where L is greater than 10, I want those indexes updated to be null. And this here colon is, is um, updating it. So that's using this replace at where the third parameter is a colon. And just say, so now you can see all of the ones that were greater than 10 here, like 18, 13, 18, and 14 are now nulls. And we're just repeating here that it doesn't actually update our original list L unless we put the colon out in front um, and explicitly redefine it there. Um, and then finally here we're showing as well, instead of doing, um, like above here we did plus and then we pass 10, we can actually combine that into one parameter and do 10 plus, um, if we wanted to. Um, so depending on which you find easier to read or cleaner, this is just going to add the first 10, uh, sorry, 10 to the first, um, two indexes of the list. And then this is going to add 10 to any index where, um, the value is greater than 25. So just note this is the same notation or does the same thing as this notation where you split up your parameters. Um, okay, um, so there's a short exercise here um, introducing an, yet another new keyword called within, which basically lets you get um, values within a range. So have a go with that and check out more reading on within. And then once you're happy with that, we'll move on to the final section of our list module, we're nearly there, hang in there. Um, and that's using um, the dot to do amendment. So dot is very similar to apply. Um, it just applies when we want to do amendment at depth. So basically this is, you're thinking about in So this is going back to our matrices that we looked at earlier. So if I have my matrix that we did um, in an earlier module, and if this isn't defined for you anymore, maybe you've gone away and come back to this, just go back up to the cell up the top where we had defined it initially. So when I have dot here, I can also do indexing. So I'm saying go to the second row, first of all, 
and then get me the third item of that row. So um, I'm going here and then I'm going to the third item, which is 15. Um, and then I could also apply the ger generic null and this would be the exact same thing as doing the notation we seen earlier with the functional notation. Um, so I'm saying for all of the rows, give me the zero with element. So that's giving me zero, nine and 18 and we'd seen this version of it before. I'll just prove that does the same thing. So we're all comfortable with that. And this is just a variation on, on doing indexing similarly to how we had a variation with at up here to do indexing. Um, and then we, to do amendment then within a matrix, um, the syntax is very similar to the at amend. We have our function notation and we have the, the dot out in front and then we pass the matrix and then we pass our um, indices that we want to change. So this is saying go first to the zero with uh, row and then the first um, element of that zero with row. So this is the same as doing the square bracket notation here. So going here first, and then this is going down a level. Um, and then I'm saying reassign those values to be that value to be 500. So if we look at this, we see here, this is getting, getting out the value three, and then I'm replacing it with 500. So you can see three is now 500. Okay. And in this final section here on cross section, we're just showing that you can also pass the indexes themselves as lists. So for example, here I'm doing matrix dot and then I'm passing it um, to lists. Oh, sorry. So if we run this. So instead of just pass, I'm getting um, the second and first, so that's here and here. And then I'm saying, give me the zero with and first element of both of those, which is why I end up with 18, 21, because I asked for the second one first and then nine and 12 here. So that's just how we could do cross section indexing as well. So that's all our versions of amending in lists. We have a short exercise here, um, just going over that. Um, and that's it for our list module. So we've covered a lot here in this module. We've gone through, you know, we started off looking at the difference between simple and general lists. Then we did some list creation from atoms. We looked at using, remember we did the in list there and the difference between that and using round brackets um, to, to join on um, to an atom and make that become a list. Um, then we looked at list indexing um, and then doing indexing at depth with our matrices. And then we had manipulation. So using take and drop and sub, sub list. Um, and then we finished up with list amendment. So that's using this at and dot to change some values within the list. So there's a lot there. Um, we also have an accompanying quiz for you to go and do some exercises on for your own additional learning. Um, and we've got a practice guidance here as well, which goes into lists in a bit more detail than we're going to cover in the videos. And then, um, you know yourself, there's obviously all the stuff I've pointed out today. There's a great chapter on lists in q for mortals book, which is available on the website as well. So definitely go and do some extra reading there. Um, you've got your exercises in here as well um, that you can go in and try and go back over everything we've discussed today and hammer home all the points um, to make sure you're comfortable with it. And thank you very much for completing this module and hopefully I'll see you in a future module very soon.